I'm here with Thibaut Saguillon. Hi uh, there. Former Stratum colleague. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice to, to sit down in here in the booth and uh, talk about what you're doing now. I mean, you've been working on this for a while, Multis. Went to SF for a while uh, to, to bootstrap the project, and now I don't even know where you are, if you're back in France or whatever, but uh, a lot of people are talking about Multis in the space. It, it um, has uh, kind of surfaced as one of the uh, more serious projects around crypto banking, and I'd like to talk to you about um, you know, what, what is Multis, but also kind of trends uh, with regard to DeFi and what you're seeing there. So thanks for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. I guess I'll start with a few words on, um, on uh, you know, Maltis. So we are, we're building a, a solution, a banking solution to help companies run business with crypto. We, we started the company like um, back in 2018, late 2018, with this idea of creating a, you know, um, a gateway to DeFi to companies um, so that they can basically leverage financial services in a decentralized fashion, which means, uh, you know, instant access to those loans, to those, all these kind of financial services you would expect from traditional banking. Yeah. Um, you have a bank account, you want to be able to like... Exactly. And you know... Borrow money or you know, invest... Basic in stuff. Your, yeah. Basic stuff that you should be able to do safely from your... Uh, you know, with your crypto. Um, so, you know, we're replicating those, those features. You have a, a current account, uh, you have a savings account, and, you know, I can talk about DeFi and how we do that later. Yeah. But, you know, we, again, we're replicating this stuff. So we started in 2018, and, uh, you know, we, we, we've come a long way since then. We... We went through, uh, we joined Wine Combinator during the summer, um, hence, you know, the, this time in YC in, um, in California. Um, a lot of things have happened since then, and, uh, and we're now back in France uh, to answer one of your questions. Okay, cool. So you're back in Paris then. We are. Okay, we well, certainly we'll are. We'll have to go get a beer sometime. <laughs> um, so what does Mutis look like? Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a company and I have crypto or I, you know, maybe I, I did an ICO and I'm... I'm leveraging that crypto to run my business, uh, to pay my employees, uh, to to rent, you know, pay pay for rent, uh, this sort of thing. Um, what what does Mutis provide uh, for these so companies? Right now, um, you know, we are building a solution that looks like exactly the same as your modern business account, business bank account. I hope not, because my modern business account is shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, th that's one of the things I keep telling my co-founder. You know. Uh, it's not, you know, we're not going to get there only by providing crypto-based services, right? We, we need to be 10 times better than actual existing solutions. Yeah. So that we're striving for, you know, offering the best of the two worlds, access to decentralized furnaces, but at the same time, you know, just killing away all related frictions and, and make this thing prettier than existing solutions. There's, this is a huge challenge, but we're getting there slowly. So to answer your questions, it's, if you think about new banks, N26, Revolt Business, et cetera, we're replicating the same user experience with crypto as an infrastructure layer. So it looks like it's a SaaS solution, really. Um, and uh, you can invite your teammates with emails so that you can you know, set up permissions to manage the funds collectively. So we use a multi-signature wallet for those familiar with us. Okay, Wh which multi-sig solution are you using? Are so you we, we initially started building with the, with the, Gnosis, the 2017 Gnosis smart contract, which is a beautiful tool. Um, it's robust, it's resilient, it's bulletproof, it's amazing. Um, but we, we wanted to get rid of gas fees, transaction mm -hmm. fees. So we had to, we had to make them, to upgrade them, to make them compatible with, you know, um, the gas station network to get rid of fees. So we, we now have our own multi signature wallets that we call multi sig, obviously. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we had many audits uh, to make sure that they are better approved too. And, uh, now we have more than 100 companies using them. So, okay. So you chose to go down the route of building your own smart contract instead of Maybe because like the Gnosis smart contract doesn't support the gas station network. The the old one, the 2017 one. I okay. Think, I think I think the I mean they're a great team and I think they're doing stuff around you know meta transactions and okay. getting rid of gas fees with the new one. Um, but you know the beauty of the two uh, to the 2017 one is the the simplicity of it. Um, it's super robust. A lot of ICO, um, you know, companies you know stole ICO firms on those wallets. Um, so we felt like. It was better to go with the old one, at least for now, and just mm. you know slightly amend it to support GSA. It's 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 one li one line of code, yeah. nothing else. Right. Um, we we in terms of security, we felt that there was more. That was the way to go. Okay, and but the the overhead and sort of also the risk of now maintaining your own smart contract, like that 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 trade off, um, 
was was a good one for you and rather than just using a, a solution an existing solution I mean Again, it's, it's, it's a simple line of code, so yeah. which means we, you know, each time there's an upgrade on the Gnosis, we, on the Gnosis 2017 one, we upgrade it as well. So okay. we're basically doing this. And uh, well, I'd like to say that beyond this, you know, very code approach, uh, if you will, we, we actually have insurance as well. So we're partnering with Nexus Mutual so that we can provide this kind of, you know, security, additional security. And so the funds are also insured? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the smart contracts are technically insured. Right. So if there is any, anything, you know, happening to the to the smart contract, then uh, you get covered by the mutual Nexus mutual the funds, and uh, you know you get your funds back. Um, cool. So, what kind of companies are using Nubtis? Can you talk about some of them? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we've been uh, companies here at ETHCC. For example, we have a uh, we have a uh, Request Network, we have iExec, we have uh, Connect uh, in the US. We have a uh, we have about one hundred uh, companies today, um, mostly crypto companies, crypto what we call crypto crypto native companies. Yeah. Companies building with crypto, companies, you know, um, just trying to do some duck footing, basically. Yeah. And wh what, are the, um, what are the types of features that crypto native companies look for uh, in, their, in their crypto bank um, that you've discovered, uh, you know, don't exist in, you know, your regular banking infrastructure? What are the you know, sort of new paradigms that are emerging in this? Well, you know, we were actually quite surprised because people get super conservative when it comes to their company's money. So we tried all this kind of exotic stuff, like automated traded stra trading strategies with token sets so that companies can could actually you know, grow their ETH holdings. Well, it did not take off. Really? No, because you feel like, you know, at the end of the day, you need somebody, I mean, you're very conservative with your money because that's technically your runaway. You need it to keep building. So, so people people tend to to stick to very traditional features. And you know, if we if we sum it up, we're providing the basic features of a bank. We're just adding, you know, instant the how do you call that the instant access. For example, if you want to put some money in your savings account, or if you want to you know invest your money to get some additional years to optimize your treasury, well, you would need at least two or three weeks if you have enough funds with your um, you know asset managers or you know um, bank advisors. With Maltis, you can actually do that in one transaction. So it's pretty powerful to optimize your treasury and extend your runaway. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, same thing with uh, a lot of features that we're building. Uh, the payroll is a huge use case for us. Uh, companies love the address book. Uh, they can save details and just, you know, send every month uh, crypto to, to companies. One of the cool things um, to conclude um, we, could, we could add is, a, is an integration with Sablier. So we could basically... With? It's a Sable, Sablier. It's like... Um, uh, it's a uh, money streaming smart contract. So basically, you lock funds in a smart contract, and then you stream them every minute or day or you know week, whatever and what your would employee feels convenient. For? Sorry. What would they use those for? Payroll. So oh. basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's payroll. So uh, you Drip know, un payroll. Unless streaming payroll. Oh, that's so cool. It is cool. It is cool. So that's that's actually one of the few very exotic new services enabled by crypto. Um, that 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 our users really love. One of the first ones. Are Is anybody doing excited. that? Sorry. Is anybody doing that? Well, not yet because it's not implemented. Okay. We did a pack, but that's that's something we are currently building it. And, and companies want to use this, like they want to try yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, other. Uh, I would love to know, uh, like, once once you've launched this, like, like the, the, the the employees that choose to to have streamed payroll or stream salary. Yeah, because I mean that that just totally changes. Um, like the just the entire paradigm of how like people get paid and how people pay for things like you know when you when you get paid you get paid at the at the at the, at the end of the month and so your rent is like right after and like your all your bills come within the first 10 days Absolutely. like it's all all that stuff is built around the paradigm and that people get paid once a month and you know if you think about it you know it's like right now this kind of streaming is is a perk just like you know um um health coverage was at the beginning like you had companies starting paying for it right that was yeah. a perk to attract the best talents uh you know Tomorrow, it will be a norm, just like health insurance is for companies today. So yeah. streaming money, to me, will be the same thing, and it will be powered, uh, you know, enabled by our solution. That's really, that's, that's an interesting thing. Yeah, I'm psyched by this. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, and so what are, the, what are the DeFi integrations that you've implemented, and which ones are getting the most usage? Do, sorry, do, do you actually have kind of like, user data or are you collecting that kind of stuff uh, 
we do have some data, so we have some figures, um, which why we don't publicize all of them, obviously, because those are companies, those are companies' funds, so we need to be careful. Yeah. Um, but I'd say that out of the 100 companies we're helping today, more than 50% of them just invest funds through Compound, which is one of the DeFi integrations we, um, we, we built. The more conservative one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, USDC and, C and, and DAI are so pretty stable, and that's yeah. a good way to diversify your, your holdings, get interest. Yeah, it's super easy to do that. Okay. Uh, and uh, fi yeah, 50% of the company are using it, so this is by far um, you know, the most compelling DeFi integration we have today. Um, another one uh, we have today, which is doing well, is Kyber. So we integrate mm -hmm. on a DAX, okay. so you can do some token swaps. Going pretty well. Um, and I, I'd say that we have many others. We, we you know, the beauty of the DeFi space of composability is that you can actually try different kind of smart contracts, test and uh, very easily and, you know, add new features or, you know, get rid of them if, if, if they don't work. Mm. Interesting. Um, one, of the, one of the big challenges that we had at Epicenter in the early days when Epicenter was a crypto-only company, like we were a crypto-only company in 2014. We've moved away from that. Uh, we kind of went backwards on that one. But yeah, in the early days, like all our customers would pay us in crypto and uh, we would pay most of our suppliers also sometimes in crypto or, you know, we had some on ramps and like off ramps to to get into fiat. But um, it, it was it was very like makeshifty. Um, and one of the things that was really uh, a challenge was the accounting. Um, and w I mean, that's. Also, one of the reasons, not o the only reason, but one of the reasons why we kind of moved away from crypto is just because the accounting was just so complicated. Um, and we were only dealing in, in Bitcoin, mind you. Like, we yeah. So what's been your experience on this side? Like, are you, are you offering kind of uh, uh, solutions to help make that easier I within Nutis or partnering with so companies that might do that? Two things here. Um, one of the big changes, uh, you know, um, from the early days is the fact that today you can use stable coins. Mm. It's a big deal for companies. It means that you yeah. can actually benefit from, you know, instant payment, I mean, time efficient, cost efficient payment without struggling with volatility. So if you replace Bitcoin with DAI, you can keep, you know, paying with crypto, um, but you benefit from the same, at least in France and most European countries and the US as well, by the way, uh, you benefit from the same environment, accounting environment uh, treatment as for um, foreign currencies, mm. USD, for example. So solves the f solves the, the number one issue, which was how do you deal with valuation fluctuation? Sure. But like some companies might want to hold, you know, ETH or Bitcoin or just because they're long on ETH or Bitcoin. Right? Yeah, so in that case, um, we will not be able to help them fully. Okay. So we, we provide transaction history and CSV exports and you know, we add some data so that you can hand it over to your accountant, to your dealers, et cetera. Okay. Um, but when you have a lot of holdings, we're partnering with companies like Very Ledger, Crypto, et cetera, yeah. um, so that you can, you know, use this data because you're holding your assets with us and, uh, you know, very easily import them uh, through APIs. But or you're, you're providing the data, so you're providing the transaction history and, like, the exchange rate? Um, correct. Okay. But we don't deal with valuation, which is, like, totally different business. Sorry? Uh, we don't deal with the, uh, you know, um, valuation fluctuation because you need, you know, that's the thing. You need to provide accurate data. Um, you know, if you, if you talk to your accountant, you'll, you, you'll need to explain him why ETH went to this price to the other. Um, I mean, there's a lot of complicated things that we don't want to do, really. Well, what do you mean? I mean, you should, I mean, like, you just need the exchange rate at which it sort of entered or... Yeah, but what, when do you, when do you evaluate it? When, wh which day, which day do you use? Um, what ah. is the accounting treatment? Uh, okay, so yeah. Do you use it as do you use it as money or do you use it as an as an asset? Um, right. You know all those questions. They are trying to be they are being solved, um, but really for this, I would recommend to use a professional accountant or an accounting software like QuickBook. Sure. Um, we are building a current solu a current account, a bank. So you know, in legacy world, you also need a bank account and an accounting solution. So sure. we're really trying to stick to that model. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, what are some of the what are some of the trends that you guys are looking at uh, in terms of um, you know building multis and uh, like the services that people w like this streaming thing is one thing, but what what other things uh, do you anticipate will come out of multis in the future? Well, you know we 
the whole idea of Maltese is to build a new kind of banking stack starting with crypto, which means we have to build uh, you know, those features with crypto first. That's what we're doing now. Um, well, fiat is not going away. Fiat currencies are not going away. So it's clear that a bank um, will have to bridge those two very separate worlds. And we're building that bank. We're just starting with crypto. One of the key things that we hear when we talk to our customers is the need for a way to spend in your local restaurant. We are working hard to provide a debit card so that you can spend directly from your die account. Ticket resto. Ticket resto. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Plus, you get some meal yield. Cards you get some yield, and that's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. In France, we have these things called meal cards. So a lot of companies will offer these meal cards to their employees, and um, you basically get like, you know, you get ten bucks a day, and uh, it's it's sort of a, an advantage in uh, what advantage in kind or um, uh, yeah whatever. yeah anyway. Um, Okay, interesting. So this this so is this is part. one of the biggest yeah. thing we're working hard on, and um, and um, you know one of the other things. I mean, it's pretty. It's a continuous of fiat features we want to provide, but we we will provide IBAN and fiat accounts. You know that's that's what we call crypto first banking. We're merging those two words. We're providing wallets, um, you know, um, business design wallets, and access to decentralized financial services. But at the same times, we're providing fiat features. Um, so that you know, companies can basically benefit from the very services, whatever the underlying infrastructure is. Mm. I mean, this is this kind of stretches outside of the realm of, of crypto banking. But um, are you aware of this uh, this instant SEPA um, the feature that the banks are now uh, implementing? Yeah, I mean, they've been trying they've been trying to implement it for like twenty years now. So yeah, yeah. But it so it's mean, likely it's likely that it it's it's it okay. Works. It, it works for for, for less than five hundred euros. Yeah. Um, today in the European but space, they want to bring it up to a thousand, a uh, hundred thousand. That's amazing. Yeah. And and you know that's why that's why we really have this belief that you know fiat and traditional payment system will not disappear fully. Yeah. But for some use cases, crypto will be a killer. Um. You know. I Cross-border payments. Everybody's talking about that, but that's that's one of the key things crypto is good for. If you want to send one hundred thousand um, uh, dollars to uh, you know China or Japan or whatever the country is, well, you will not use SEPA. Sure, no, but you, within you will Europe, use crypto. But within Europe, I think like the 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 instant SEPA thing. Um, so instant SEPA is or, uh, for our foreign uh, non-European listeners. So SEPA is the uh, the, the the payment uh, uh, service. It's a payment network. Payment network in, in Europe that allows you to send money from any European bank to any European bank using an IBAN. And Instant SEPA allows you to do that, You know, whereas before it would take maybe a day or two if you're going internationally. It's instant. I mean, I was I, I it happened to me sort of by accident the other day. I transferred money from one of my accounts to the other, expecting it to take 24 hours, but I got a text message in 20 seconds saying, like, here's the money. I was like, what? <laughs> and uh, and did some reading about it. And it's actually like a really interesting evolution to the SEPA um, network. And with, if you think about it, like, okay, it, it, it doesn't have all of the aspects of crypto, but like, what is a SEPA address? A SEPA address is, an, is uh, um, sorry, an IBAN. An IBAN is an, 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 a unique Chain of letters or identifier to a bank account. Um, increasingly, with things like Revolut, you can have multiple IBANs, so you can create an IBAN maybe for your savings, your your personal account, maybe you have like an, an account with, you know, where you like have a, a joint with your, your partner or something like that. And, um, but wh what's interesting is that, you know, we can, we can think about building infrastructure on top of SEPA. So someone could build like an IOV or maybe even IOV could integrate with uh, with IBAN so that you could also have your IBAN and your IOV uh, uh, address. And so sort of building all, all this kind of interesting stuff that we're doing in crypto uh, because of this instant, uh, uh, the ability to have instant payments, some of those things can carry over, I think, to the traditional finance world. And so all the experiments that are happening in DeFi, like the super, super um, far, far out uh, uh, experimental stuff, some of those things might be uh, transferable into the traditional banking. There are obvious, um, you know, synergies there, yeah. um, and uh, you know, um, it's 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 really why we wanted we have this vision of you know making those two worlds interoperable. Um, this doesn't make any sense to build like in a silo on one hand, and you know, 
uh, replicate things that the others are doing. And I think, I think we will see services that can only work with crypto. We mentioned money streaming. You cannot do that with traditional banking system. Well, you can do that with crypto. So the whole idea of, of well, you could with instant SEPA. Well, you would you would need an intermediary to streaming. You will be able to send it every two weeks or three weeks. But if you want to start programming it, uh, it makes things much more complicated. Mm. So you know, as as soon as you get beyond um, you know mere payment, you kind of restrain by the, the the thirty years or forty years of you know IT infrastructure banking infrastructure that banks have been building. Um, and uh, SEPA is a good thing, but they needed 30 years to, to implement it. Yeah. So innovation goes faster than that. So we, you, you, need, you need to be the in, in to build this innovative layer of infrastructure to provide new, new services like streaming, like, uh, um, you know, like instant invoice financing. If you, know, if you think about it, you can use, you know, you can tokenize invoices and use them as collateral yeah, um, that's really to, get, to get yeah. instant financing. So that's something we could provide. Um, but with traditional banking, well, SIPA or not, you still need two weeks to do that. Yeah. So when you are in desperate need for cash, um, well, you're stuck. So that's the kind of things, instantaneous services that crypto can help provide on top of additional services that are improving slower. So, so y you touched on something there, which is interesting. So y y the, um, the, the tokenization of invoices, is that, is that something you guys are working on? So we are- um, Factoring, is it? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Affacturage for French listeners. Affacturage. <laughs> uh, so the idea is uh, the idea is to basically get some cash ahead of receiving uh, your receivables. Yeah. So basically. you know you 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 work uh, for uh, for for a client and they they have a sixty days payable policy and so you send out your invoice and sixty days later. They usually money. wait until the 59th or the sixtieth day to actually pay you. So exactly. you're stuck. And if you're a small if you you're sure small business that's hard. Um, so you know that actually, no reason number one for small businesses to, to, to go bust. So, so what we have in mind here is that you, you can basically transform this invoice from a, a reputable company. You can transform it in a token. This token can be used as collateral so you can lock it in a smart contract and provide loan against this collateral mm. without the need of an intermediary. So com you can a company is called uh, Centrifuge. Um, so they're doing this uh, protocol called Teen Lake that we're considering to integrate. Uh, could be a super powerful solution, and you know could really talk to mainstream mainstream companies beyond the sole crypto space. Cool. So what's next for you? Uh, wha what hiring. Uh, hiring. Hiring. How many people are you hiring? How many uh, people are you, by the way? Well, we are just the two of us now. Okay. So yeah, we're super small. Uh, we've been growing super fast, uh, but now we need some help. Uh, you raised how much? Uh, well, we, we don't disclose the, the figures yet, but we, we've raised enough to have a team of 10 people and be at ease for 24 months. So that's cool. Okay. Um, so it's a good, it's a good, a good way that will help us, you know, provide us bank, uh, and fiat features. So we, ha we, we hiring for that, uh, you know, between f four and five engineers, uh, we're using closure script. If any of you guys are listening closure script, which is a very, you know, advanced language, come talk to us. Um, solidity, obviously, we're dealing with smart contracts. Uh, we're hiring marketers uh, to help us go mainstream, and um, and yeah, product designers to, to make the solution even prettier. Cool. And you're doing all this uh, here, or are you gonna build out a remote company? <laughs> well, uh, we are no, we are a remote friendly company. Remote friendly. Uh, okay. I think kind of makes sense when you yeah. you know building with distributed technologies, right? Yeah. Uh, so remote company, uh, but the the main office is in. Uh, well, the main office is actually in San Francisco. So we're building from here because it's, we get access to a huge, I mean, a huge pool of talents. So it yeah. makes sense here. The fintech space is always, you know, a little bit more advanced in Europe. Um, and we, uh, and yeah, we're hiring people remotely uh, as long as they're on Western Europe. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, time difference makes things hard sometimes. So we want to stick to the same one. Cool. Thanks, Thibaut. Thank you so much.